time, um, we'll kick off the meeting. So Rob, if you would, uh, if you want to start introducing yourself, and then we can kind of go through the roll call there. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert Miller. I am the moderator and note taker in this meeting. I am a member of the Solid Waste Advisory Board, a group of citizens from different parts of this of the city that have been trying to help uh, create, work on solid waste programs for the city. I want to let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded and will be able to be posted on the city's website. Uh, you won't be seeing me because I don't know how to make my camera work right now. We have two council people that said they would join. I see Sue Steele on. She is a council person from District 3. I do not yet see Eileen McDermott. She is the per council person from District 6. And there are two other that I notice Solid Waste Advisory Board members on, Marie Gavazzi and Susan Jadlos. I will be taking notes for the question for the meeting. Um, the other, the job that I have as moderator is to allow each of you to speak. Right now, everybody is muted. You can raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon in, in the very bottom of the screen, raise hand. Once I see that and a, the person in front of you is done talking, I will allow you to talk. When you are done, I will mute you and I will try to remember to lower your hand and let the next person talk. Uh, the person who is doing the bulk of this meeting is Renee Panetta. She is a recycling coordinator for the city of Troy uh, and right now dealing very much with pay as your throw as well as a bunch of other things. Once she is done with her comments, we will get into a question and answer period and that's when you can raise your hand and we can deal with that. Renee, I think we are ready. We have 26 people on the line right now. So you Excellent. want to take it away? Sure. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate the introductions of everybody and all the housekeeping that you just did. Um, so what I tend to do with most of the meetings is do the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I start with the ugly because if I start with the good, you've got no reason to trust me. So I'll start off by telling you what's not so great, and then we'll move into the stuff that is going well, and then into the projects and initiatives we're working on. So right now, ugly we're dealing with is uh, the age of our trucks, the fact that we still have alleys and pedestrian areas that we have litter issues with, and that we're still dealing with the issues of dumping. The way that we're planning on handling much of that is um, we are planning on a, an annual basis of replacing trucks as the budgets allow. So part of that in the budget approval process is making sure that on an annual basis, we're replacing the trucks more frequently. Um, again, one to two per year as we're able through budget purposes so that our fleet doesn't age the way that it is currently. Um, many of our trucks are so incredibly old that they are nearly uh, out of service while they're still in service. Um, as for the dumping, the alleyways, the litter, we are bringing on a third litter patrol officer and that will help to manage those issues as well as um, to be able to deter people by a larger number of violations being given for things like the dumping. So the bad is the COVID impacts on the rollouts of several of the programs. Um, some of the things that we were hoping to do, like open what was previously referred to as the Alamo and is now referred to as Troy Resource Management Facility. We have been hoping for that last spring. Um, that will be happening this week. So I'm very excited to report that, but it's way later than we wanted to be opening that. Um, we did not have a compost pilot approved for budget this year that would have started doing what's called debulking of garbage, which is taking some heavy materials out. So we're hoping to reintroduce that for next year. Um, we are also planning on redeploying street cans that are out of service right now. There are parts that are being replaced on many of those, and a good number of those will be put into uh, District 2, District 3, I'm sorry, District 2, District 5, and District 6, where many cans are needed. Um, we've also ordered uh, about 300 more of the 96 gallon, the large barrels, and are, we are increasing the range, the area, 
um, that we are using for automated service. So we're hoping to be deploying those within the next month to two months, um, as soon as we've got our feet under us with having the Alamo open. Uh, the good is we've got over 20 Earth Day events this year. I think we're up to 22 now, which is super exciting. Um, they are all posted online. So you can host an event and add another event on if you'd like to, or you can sign up for those. They're all on the uh, city's Earth Day page. We have four intermunicipal household hazardous waste days. The first of which is this Saturday in Bethlehem and we do still have some slots open. Um, that's for East Greenbush, Troy and Bethlehem residents. And um, as I said, we do have some slots open for that. And the next event, which is the one that will be in the, the first one to be held in Troy this year is in June on the 26th. And that one will go live for signups um, probably by the middle of next week. There'll be an East Greenbush event on the 28th of August, and then another one back in Troy on October 30th. We have our electronics tire and shredding event coming up in the city, and that's on May 8th, and that's also an online registration. So any of these, um, if you have questions or concerns with how to register, please feel free to send me an email. Um, we will get you the links out uh, very quickly. I have that all queued up and ready to go for folks. Um, we will be open once a week minimum at the Troy Resource Management Facility, starting out on Thursdays every week uh, from noon until three. And we're hoping to expand that and have it from nine until one so that people have the opportunity to bring materials down at their convenience. Um, spring cleanups have already started. We have a new platform that is going to be an online platform that people will be able to look at and research um, any item that they want to be disposing of. And if you don't feel like calling in to me, which you're always welcome to do or email, there'll also be this new platform that you'll be able to look on. And if you wanted it print out and email to you, I'm sorry, if you wanted it print out and mailed to you, uh, that's something we have the capability of doing as well. We currently have a composter and rain barrel sale online. And so if you're interested in that, happy to provide additional details on that. Um, we have magnets, we have large recycling bins, and we have stickers, all of which are at no charge to residents and can be picked up at the City Hall. And um, we did a donation recently of 13 sets of ba 50 bags to pantries in the area. Um, that was with rebating that New York State gives back to the city. Uh, we had wanted to give it back to the retailers, those that collect the five cents for paper bags, but the requirement is that the city utilizes it. And so we gave it to pantries in need and we're able to give out almost 700 bags that way. Um, so that's it for the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, pay as you throw, which everybody seems to have lots of questions about understandably, this is the beginning of the conversation process. We started last week with it. It will go to council, of course, before anything is implemented. Um, council has the final decision. We are trying to proactively involve everybody in the process this time. And the goal is to manage the costs for the city and for residents. And there are a bunch of different hybrid options by which we'll be doing that. Um, one of the ways that we're going to try and help give a greater understanding of what pay as you throw is meant to do is by doing trash audits. And what that means is we will literally come to neighborhood meetings or to uh, various neighborhoods and do a trash audit where you flip a garbage can entirely upside down and sort its contents, not you, but myself and others. Um, so you don't have to touch it, I promise, um, to turn the garbage can upside down and to sort it into this is where things go. So that people truly have an understanding of how that works and why the system itself works. Um, this is something that's been in practice for many years. Uh, there are some great examples of these trash audits online that I can also send you links for. Don't wanna inundate people with links, but I'm also happy to share that information out as people want it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is there are a couple questions that were sent to me in advance that I will answer. But as you ask your questions, I'll ask you to do the same thing I asked folks last week and think about what the why is for your question. Um, what that means is most people have a, um, a motivator, whether it's economic, environmental, or for your community. 
And as you ask the questions, think about what your motivator is. And if you're willing, share that with me, because that way, as we build and construct different programs, we can take into consideration what's most important to uh, the neighbors, the residents in the community. So I'm gonna start out by answering some of the questions I received this morning. If a resident chooses to use private contractor for bulk or solid waste management, will the city continue to pick up that resident's yard waste and leaf bags and bulk pickup items? The answer is yes and sort of. So the yard waste, absolutely. The leaf bags, absolutely. For bulk items, um, yes, but it's at a fee. And it would be at a fee that uh, a renter would get charged rather than as a property owner because the solid waste fee covers a supplemental portion of the bulk fee. So it depends on what the items are, but it would be at a slightly higher fee. Um, where will the pay as you throw bags be available and how much will the bags cost? What do residents and other local communities using pay as you throw pay for the specific bags? Um, the bags availability, they will be at anybody that's a retailer in the city that is willing to carry them. In most cities that have it available, there are virtually no retailers that opt out because it's a great way for them to get foot traffic back into their locations. Um, the bag cost, we have not established that yet. Um, last year, we established it well in advance, but we hadn't made all the considerations we needed to, which is why it came back from council and we're reworking that. So we don't have the answer on that. Um, in other municipalities, it really does depend. There are so many different types of models. That's what we're doing a re-comparison of at this point to make sure that's being designed specifically for Troy. How much will residents be required in conjunction to having to use separate bags for the pay as you throw? Again, that's what we're building on now. We have to establish the baseline that's going to be used, whether it's a combination of a certain number of bags and a solid waste fee, whether uh, the bags are separate from the solid waste fee. So those are the things that we are working on over the coming months and we'll be working with council on as well. What happens if a resident doesn't use the proper bag? What if the individual is a tenant at the property? Um, the resident not using a proper bag. Generally speaking, if we model it from some of the other municipalities that we're most uh, closely investigating in terms of comparisons, generally speaking, what happens is the first sticker is an OOP sticker. The second sticker would be a warning sticker and or a tag. And then the third sticker would be a violation. The trash is still picked up because we don't want to leave it on the streets, um, but very few individuals, very few residents get to that third sticker or that third tag because they choose to be compliant. Um, and that's pretty much across the board with all municipalities. There are, of course, always going to be exceptions, and we don't expect that there would not be exceptions. Um, I think that was a double negative. I apologize. Um, but we will work with residents on that. If the individual is a tenant, it is the landlord's responsibility. So that is one of the goals with having the website uh, and the, the platform live long before we are considering the pay as you throw options because we want that information to be accessible across the board in every way possible. Um, so the tenant is the responsibility of the landlord, but we intend to do as much education in advance and during as possible. Elderly and shut-ins and those residents without transportation, how will they get the bags? Um, that's a fair question and they get bags now. And so my feeling would be that's something that we will talk about on a one-off. There will be availability uh, in centralized locations. And it's a question that we will have to investigate more deeply. That isn't something that has necessarily been as deeply considered as it needs to be before the plan is implemented. What other local communities use this type of recycling solid waste management program for garbage pickup? How long have these other communities used this type of service? How has it worked out for them? And are they still using that service? Also an excellent group of questions. Other communities locally, um, the closest that has used it for a long time is Hudson, which is a much smaller community. Uh, but across Western New York, there are a number of communities that are much larger and similar in size to Troy that have been using it for up to 30 years. I have not been able to find examples of any municipality that has used it and then stopped using it. So there hasn't been anyone that I've been able to locate that has had such a lack of success with it that the program was discontinued. So those are all the advanced questions that I received and I am happy to take questions from you and I'd like to open the floor. Thank you.
I want to remind everybody you can raise your hand by going to the bottom of the Zoom screen and clicking on the, the yellow hand. And when I see somebody do that, I will unmute your microphone and you can speak. Ask your question. Okay, Gary. Gary Becker, you're the first one. I have, I'm going to unmute you. Okay, I have already unmuted you. You just need to unmute your microphone. Gary, we're not hearing you. Gary, it might help if you press Alt A, that will unmute your microphone, I believe. Hmm. How about if I move on to Stephen while we're waiting for Gary to, to figure it out? Okay, Stephen Adams, you're up. You need to unmute. Hi, Stephen. Hi, you're Stephen. unmuted. Hello? Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening, Renee. I don't know. Um, do you have volume turned off on your speakers, gentlemen, either of the two of you? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to try Brian. Brian Lutz, can you please speak and hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Nate, can you hear me? Yes, yes. excellent. Okay. So uh, um, my computer's not broke though. Uh, let's see. So my first question, and you probably got this last week, is I am a landlord of uh, some properties in the RPI area and uh, some off of the Congress Street area. Um, just been cited by your um, your, your litter patrol for a uh, mattress that was in the rear of our property. And I see that this is going to be a larger problem as we go um and me not living on the premise not knowing that that mattress is there and we've never had any problems with the city at all how do you intend on dealing with that is it, is it just that we're just going to continue to find the landlords that have numerous properties and are paying taxes to the city is that is that what we're looking to do or how are we how are we going to address that problem no, that is not how we're, that's not how we're looking to do it. Uh, so I'll start out by saying that uh, it's, it's not a perfect model. That is something that many municipalities contend with. And it's not, it's one I'd rather we didn't have to contend with, but I'm aware that we do. So uh, what we do tend to do is have conversations with both the landlord. And if you have a tenant on premises where it, the problem is most prevalent, having them be in contact with the litter patrol officer as soon as they see it and contacting the Troy Police Department because once there is documentation that it's not belonging to your property and it's a dump of some nature or another, then that is removed as a violation for you. So the most, uh, well, so in my opinion, the best way to handle it would be to be proactive about it. And that's where we do need the landlord engagement, whether you are on site or outside the city what we've asked our outside the city landlords to do is to designate somebody on site that's a trusted tenant that you can be in communication with. So if that happens, they can take a picture, communicate or email or text that picture to you. And you can be in touch with the police department and the litter patrol officer or that they can. I'm happy to share that information. If you email me, I can send you the litter patrol officer's information for your area if that helps. Oh, I have, I've spoke with Frank. Um, okay in regards to that and it's it's i guess it's a concern because i live outside the city but i live two minutes from the city uh you know i live in the town of north greenbush and i actually drive our properties every day and it just happened to be that the litter patrol had gone by and saw this 
prior to me seeing it, I guess, or noticing it, you know. Um, and he said that he was going to contact me back, that he had to contact City Hall, and he wasn't sure if there was anything he could do about it. So, so that's where being proactive about it. So if if you do happen to see it, or a tenant that is there happens to see it first, the, the, the goal is to get ahead of the issue or the problems as they come up. And I, I can't tell you that I, I can problem solve on it every time, but I can say that the more proactive we're all able to be about it together, the better the results are going to be. So communicating it to the litter patrol officer before they know, or to the Troy Police Department, or even to myself, if you can't reach anybody else, um, you know, I'll certainly communicate that with my colleagues on behalf of any resident. So in addition to your response there, so I did call the litter patrol office uh, and uh, public works or not public works and code, code enforcement. Uh, no one answers the phones. <laughs> no one answers the phone. It took Frank three days to even get back to me. So what I would suggest, I don't know if you just have his office phone or his cell phone, but you're more than welcome to email me. I will communicate with him directly and the sanitation supervisor. So I, I certainly don't believe I'm passing the buck. And if you're not having results where you're trying to reach out, then I can certainly intervene and do what I can to help with that. Okay, and I'm, and I'm just gonna ask one more question, I guess. Sure. As a follow-up to the same, my, my original question. As the program is uh, going forward and we're gonna, people are gonna inundate the police department with these calls. And I guess my original question is, how do you intend on managing that amount? Like people are just dumping stuff. We, we put a house under, con a property under contract in Lansenburg and opted to back out because of the alley was just completely full of garbage, the whole alley. And, you know, I just didn't want us to get involved in that war on fighting that I have to go there every every day and fill my truck up with somebody else's garbage. That, that's understandable. And we certainly would like to avoid you filling up your truck with garbage. And we're grateful that you take good care of your neighborhood, the neighborhoods you have houses in. Um, it, in terms of problem solving on that, one of the reasons we're bringing on a third litter patrol officer is so that we can make smaller zones that each of them is responsible for. And that way it's more blanket coverage. Um, that's one step in that direction. Um, in addition to the fact of expanding to have a recycling specialist working with me as well, because that way we can develop uh, processes and operational measures to go along with the feed on the street. So does that answer your question? Yes, I, I'll just, uh, I'll email you for uh, your contact information as well and the link to whatever you can assist me with. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That. And I'm also happy to give you Frank and Eugene's um, uh, cell phone numbers as well. Frank being your litter patrol officer. And if there are others on the call that have Eugene as their litter patrol officer, I can provide that as well. Okay, thank you very much. You're most welcome. I will, I will try to put Renee's email address in the chat when I get the opportunity. Oh, you know what? I can do that while you're unmuting the next person. Okay, Brian, are you done? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's try Stephen again. Stephen, you still have the floor if you want it, but it looks like your microphone is still on mute. Not hearing anything from Stephen. Brian. Can you try again? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, excellent. We can hear you now. Hi, Brian. <laughs> it's just going to be us. <laughs> I, I didn't have a question. Oh. I didn't raise my oh. hand. I didn't oh, your, your hand, hand is down. showing raised. OK. But I didn't put it down. That was Brian that just asked the questions about being oh. the landlord who lives in North Greenbush. My apology, uh, Stephen, nothing yet. Cindy, Cindy Ryan, please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that's good. I thought maybe it was because we were on an iPad and you could, we couldn't unmute ourselves or something. Um, I just have a question about the uh, yard waste. Uh, 
bags being put out. Now we we put some out, uh, I think two bags, last garbage day. I didn't know what day to put it out. I thought that was doing the right thing. Is there a certain day it has to be out there? Because we noticed like it was days later and they still hadn't picked it up. Um, so the whole thing is then it rains and then they get you know wet and then they break all apart. And so we just wanna know if there's a certain day we have to have them out there. And that, uh, that's very reasonable. Yes, You're, it is supposed to be on your trash pickup day. Um, the, the teams are just trying to get their feet under them with having spring cleanup run simultaneously and trying to get the Alamo open. So I apologize. And it may take a couple weeks before we're on a very this regular schedule. This, this is gonna be such a flop. What's that? Uh, I think that was Brian who I forgot to mute. Go ahead, Cindy or Renee. Um, so the uh, the bags themselves are meant to be picked up on the same day as your recycling and your trash, and then as well um, as of this Thursday, at least once a week, you'll be able to put to bring them down to the Alamo if you wish to bring them down your, there yourself to the trash. Yeah, I management. really don't want. Yeah, yeah, I really don't want to cart them in my car. So that's understandable. Whole, you know. Some some people like to do that if they're doing like uh, islands or something in their neighborhood. But we are happy to pick them up for you and hoping to have everything on a schedule in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so it'll take a little while before that's really up. yes. And if it's not if it's not resolved for you, I would say by the end of next week, let me know, and I'll put in a call to the sanitation department and let them know that you're having issue with that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, Cindy, thank you. I'm lowering your hand. And let's try Gary Becker. You are able to speak. Go ahead. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Oh, good. Can can you briefly explain explain what this pay to throw is? Is it like every bag, I don't know what size we're talking about, but every bag that we put in the regular garbage, we're going to pay like five bucks a bag for or something like that? So the fees would not be that high. I, that I can say. We don't have a fee set yet, but so what it would be is any number of different ways that the, that the prices are constructed. Uh, our goal is to keep bag prices as low as possible. Um, we don't know yet if it's going to get wrapped into the solid waste fee or if it would be separate from that. But again, the goal is to keep that price as low as possible. The likelihood is that there would be three sizes available, a seven gallon, a 15 gallon, and a 30 gallon. And um, depending on the size of bag would be the, the purchase price. But again, we haven't got that price ironed out yet. And whether it's going to be separate from or wrapped into the solid waste fee. Does that answer the question? I, I guess so, uh, partially anyway. So <clears throat> the, the fee that we will pay will be in purchasing the bags. Is that what you're, what you're saying? Sorry about that. Um, just needed a sip of water. So okay. the fee, it depends on how the fee is constructed. There are any number of ways to do it. Um, some communities go with the higher bag fee. Some go with a no charge for a, a certain number of bags and it's included in the solid waste fee and some do a hybrid um, where there's a lower solid waste fee and a bag price that is connected to it for a certain number of bags and then additional bags are at an additional cost. Okay. I, I that that sounds pretty simple. So it's not it's not like they go in to our garbage bin and count the bags. No. And then no. no. Okay. That would be an absolute okay. nightmare administratively. I, Thank you. I'm I glad agree. you asked that. So no, the way it works would be um, retailers throughout the city, and um, we can also make arrangements from what I understand for retailers that border the city would have bags for sale, either singly or a number of them 
in like a role, a small role. And then okay. those bags would be purchased or there'd be vouchers for them if it winds up being wrapped into a fee. Uh, and that would be, it would just be like buying regular bags, only they are specialized bags. Okay. And are they going to be biodegradable? Is that the type of bag, like our leaf bags or? No, no. And no. Um, the reason that we have opted to go with plastic bags that are not biodegradable is because plastic bags that are biodegradable tend to be ones that will rip more easily. The company that uh, is most likely going to be the candidate we would work with does have a bag recycling program if we opt to go that way. Uh, but the, the weight, the mill of the plastic uh, with the ones that are biodegradable, even if, even if they were strong enough and got to the landfill intact, the amount of heat that it requires for that bag to biodegrade is fairly unlikely over a period of years in a landfill situation. In an ideal commercial composting situation, that would be the type of bags we'd opt for as a plastic bag, but not in the landfill. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate the You're info. Welcome. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Um, I think Stephen Adams is now on unmute. Stephen, go ahead. Um, sorry, but I'm still not hearing Stephen. Stephen, at the top, with... at the top row of your keys above uh the f3 which is above your three key there may be a plus sign and a picture of a microphone or megaphone any luck no luck okay then let's go to gretchen gretchen you now have the floor and please unmute unmute your microphone hi this is gretchen can you hear me? Yep. Um, I have a, a kind of a follow-up question to the lady who asked about the yard waste bags. Yes. Um, I know that they are supposed to be put out when our trash is picked up. And I've asked this question periodically over the course of time. And I always get the same answer, but it's an unsatisfactory answer. I'm told that I have seen this, I have witnessed this in my neighborhood, the guys coming, they pick up the garbage and this is a garbage truck with garbage and they turn around and they throw the leaf bags in the truck as well. It's not a bit, it's not a truck that's just picking up leaf bags, it's a truck that's picking up our garbage. And I'm told, oh, that doesn't happen. They're not supposed to do that. Well. It is happening. So there's two things I can tell you. The first of which is if you give me uh, your street address, not necessarily on the call, but if you give me your street address, I'll speak mm -hmm. to the sanitation supervisor and find out which truck and which route that is. Because okay. it isn't something that should be happening. And if it is happening, which I believe if you're saying it, it is, um, that we will handle that. The other thing is when was the last time you saw that? Was last it this week. year? last week okay week that would definitely yes, be because our trash is picked up on tuesdays right and i was coming back from walking the dog and the guys the truck was coming around and my neighbor had a bag out and as i'm coming into my house just across the street as i come in the trash was picked up and i looked and they were putting her yard bag into the back of the truck and it was the same truck? Yes, ma'am. Okay, definitely let me know what your route in your neighborhood is and mm -hmm. um, I'll have a conversation because uh, I, I am quite certain that wouldn't be satisfactory to the sanitation supervisor either. Uh, we have a great program working with a vendor that picks up our leaves and we've been doing a great job of keeping them decontaminated. So that's not great news to be hearing and I certainly would like to be proactive about handling that, okay? Okay, because I keep the answer I get all the time when I ask this question, and I asked it just recently to um, a city council person 
who got back to me because I had a list of questions and I asked that same question. And my question was, one of my questions was, would our garbage fee be lowered any? Because I understand that there's a, a cost for the tonnage, a tonnage fee when the trucks go and get dumped and everything. And I asked, well, would you know, would costs be lowered if the trucks didn't pick up yard waste bags? And I, and the response came back, oh, they don't do that. They shouldn't do that. It's never happened. They have separate trucks for this. Well, it does happen. So to me, uh, the answer is it shouldn't happen. That is correct. But if the fact of the matter is that it does happen, then we have to take actions and corrective actions on that. Yes, we pay per ton for garbage and we don't wanna be paying for leaves to go to the landfill because that's not their best and highest purpose or use. Um, and you know we, we don't get charged for the leaf hauling. So it's to our advantage as a city mm -hmm. and as residents to not be having them commingle. So it's certainly something that I'd be happy to be proactive about and I'll speak to my colleagues about on your behalf. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. The only other hand that is still raised is Stephen Adams. Oh, now I see Jennifer. Stephen, are you there? Okay, I'm going to give Jennifer on hold the floor. Jennifer, go ahead. Hey, guys. Hello. Good call. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. Actually, you mentioned it. It's just just a suggestion idea thing. Um, I'd love the option to have recycled plastic bags. Um, just if I'm, you know, if I'm using plastic, I love, I don't think it should be the only option. If it's a cost, it's less cost effective for all residents, uh, might not want it, but I'd love to have that as an option. Um, if purchasing bags, just so I can reduce the use of plastic in my life. So that was all I wanted to say. Thank you. And Jennifer, the consideration is going to be more so um, the, the end use with the garbage bags. So most plastic bags, there are some exceptions and I won't go into all of the, the details of it because you probably all don't wanna hear that on this call but I'm happy to answer specifics on it. Um, almost all plastic bags are in fact recyclable. They cannot go in your regular recycling bin. And so, um, it's the compostability, the biodegradable factor um, that we were most likely not going to select. But the bags themselves, the recycling plans that are available for them are more so um, on, on the, the landfill end before they get to the landfill, removing them from the waste stream. I don't know how perfected that system is. And so before I committed us to doing something like that, what I can tell you is that most plastic bags are recyclable in the proper manner, just not in your recycling bin. So I'd be happy to share that information by email if that's something that you'd like. Oh, no, I appreciate that. And I, I let me clarify by saying, um, thank you for that information. Um, I was thinking specifically of the pre-use purchased plastic bags that we would purchase from the city being already recycled oh. plastic. Oh, yes, yes, they are. I'm sorry, yeah. I totally misunderstood your question. Oh, I apologize. I might not have communicated it well. So, um, but yeah, I just think it, if, if they aren't, you know, but if there's an option, even if it's not all of them because of cost efficiency or whatever, I just love to have an option of buying a plastic bag to use for my trash that has already been recycled once through that stream. They do, they do have recycle content in most of the companies that sell those bags, yes. Cool, awesome. That was it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so before we move on to, it looks like Sue is next. Um, yep. So Stephen, since we cannot hear you, what I would ask is um, if you're willing to email me, we'll try you again before the end of the call, but if you're willing to email me a question or if you wanna call me offline um, during the business day, I'm more than happy to, to answer your questions in whatever way I can. So. Stephen, if, if you can still hear me, even though you, you can't, we can't hear you, uh, in, in some manner or another, we'll try and connect. So I apologize. We're, we're good to go on the next question. Okay, Sue Steele, you are able to talk. Okay, great. Uh, thank you all. 
Uh, my question, and I think I've got it clarified, but I just want to uh, be sure. Uh, at one point, yard waste had to be put out on the your collection day, the last full week of the month. But now that we're now that we're in spring, new 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 rules, we can put it out whenever our pickup day is. Is that correct? Correct. Whenever your pickup day is, that day, the rest of the month, and that's throughout spring cleanup. Um, and then on an ongoing basis, we're also on Thursdays going to have the Alamo, the Troy Resource Management Facility open every week. So that's an alternative in addition to having the weekly pickups. Will this continue and this, or, or will we change back to the other uh, schedule where it's the, the last full week of the month? I mean, it, it for, for many of us, it's confusing when it changes uh, frequently. So um, it, are we gonna keep this every, every pickup um, rule for a while? The goal is to do that through at least the end of spring cleanup. And if it's sustainable after that, the intention is to keep it in place. Great, okay, thank you. You are most welcome. When does spring cleanup end, Renee? Um, to the best of my knowledge, unless it was extended May 15th, and then after that, based on need, uh, we'll continue to have pickups done regularly. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything else, Sue? Okay. No, that. Oops, I, I cut you off. Uh, Gary Becker, you are up again. <clears throat> I, I, you couldn't hear me before. Just a suggestion to the people that are trying to be heard. I, I had to go to settings to my Zoom item in the settings and unmuted it there and then you can be heard or at least I could be and I'm on an iPad so I don't know if that makes a difference. Probably not. So maybe Stephen can try that and maybe it'll work. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Nice. I appreciate it. Okay. Hmm. Sue, are you up again? No, but okay. Yep. Th thanks for the chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I apparently didn't lower your hand. Uh, Gretchen Riley again. Go ahead. Hi again. Um, quick question regarding the electronic um, the waste day that's coming up in May. Mm-hmm. I had seen the registration probably pretty, pretty right when it um, was posted on Facebook and I clicked on the link and I filled out the form and I registered and all. Are we going to get confirmation of that? Are we going to get a ticket? Do I need to register again? Thank you for asking that. I meant to say this earlier. There's something that is a glitch in the emails going out in some cases so that the confirmation didn't come out. Um, it, again, I would ask if you email me, I'll send you a copy of the confirmation and then a week before the event, we'll send out confirmation of times. I apologize, I should have mentioned that earlier. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. Okay. Amy, Amy Height, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if we have specific goals with the pay as you throw plan. Is there some sort of quantifiable gain we're looking for or just, we just know it will help us reduce trash. I, that's my question. Is there a specific goal? Yes, um, thank you. Uh, that's a great question and it's a very fair one as well. So um, on average, anywhere from 25 to 45% reduction in overall waste and usually a 25 to 40% increase in the amount of recycling that happens. So overall, it drops the amount that our tip fee, that's the amount we pay per ton. Um, it drops the number of tons that we are bringing to the landfill and therefore it controls costs. Okay, yeah. Is there concern over the recycling stream quality as a result of this? Like, will people be more inclined to recycle something they weren't sure about so they don't have to throw it out? 
Oh, well, uh, that's another good question. So um, that's another thing that we would put OOP stickers on for because we do wanna control the quality of what is going into the recycling bins. That's also the reason that uh, before implementation of pay as you throw, before it even goes to council, having the platform of Recollect, which is the, the online, it's like a storage cabinet, but it has all the information in terms of what can and cannot go in the bin, other places that things can be diverted, whether it's um, a compost program or whether it is uh, bringing things to one of the uh, textile bins or donating at some place. So all of the things that can happen with a particular item will be listed on that so that you have options in terms of how and what you can divert. So we're trying to put that educational component far in front of when we'd be rolling out a program. Great, thank you, appreciate You're it. You're welcome, thank you. I don't see any other hands raised right now. So while we're waiting to see if any more hands go up, um, I'll give a couple of other updates. So um, last year we had a composter and rain barrel sale, which we do online. It's not something the city makes money on. It's something that we work directly with a vendor at a reduced cost so that tenant, residents and tenants can purchase them. Um, that sale will be going on until May 5th. And that will also have pick up on the same day as um, our electronics event. So that's an opportunity for folks that weren't uh, with us earlier, the household hazardous waste days. Um, there's one coming up this coming weekend in Bethlehem that there are still slots open for Troy residents. The Troy events will be in June and in October. And then there'll be also one in East Greenbush as well. Um, so those will all be coming up in the very near future, as well as some other new programs that we're hoping to roll out as well. Any other questions I can answer for anybody? Uh, Di, Dawn Coleman has her hand up. Dawn, go ahead. You are... I, yes, unfortunately, I, I joined late and I see that you're recording. Um, will I be able to view this again via recording? Will there be a link afterwards? Yes, there will. Um, I will have to ask because I'm not certain um, when John posts it. John is the Deputy Director of Communications for the city. Um, so if you don't see it up, maybe in the next, I'd say two days, definitely feel free to email me. I'll check in with him on that. Um, the first meeting that we had last week was not recorded. So that one we'll have notes for. We'll also have um, written or typed or computerized electronic notes after the um, after the meetings have been completed as well. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. You said they will be on the city website, a link for this? To my understanding from what John Salka had said, um, there will be links on the website to be able to view the these as YouTube videos afterward. Okay. I suggest it be somewhere like on the front page so that people don't have to search for it. Agreed, agreed. So we'll check in with John if we don't see that in the next two days max. Okay. Thank you, Don. Uh, Gretchen Riley is back. Go ahead, Gretchen. I have another question regarding composting. Yes. How, I understand the theory behind composting, especially if you um, want it for your own gardens, if you, you know, do vegetables and things like that. Um, I'm not into that. I remember many, many years ago as a kid growing up, my grandparents had a small metal garbage pail, they would call it. And into that would go all the food scraps and all the composting material, I guess. Um, and the garbage collector would come around and they would put it out and the garbage collector would come around and then other things got burned. But anyways, how, if a resident isn't composting how how are we supposed to do it or how could we do it if we should you know should choose to compost things or how how does it work <laughs> i think i understand the question so tell me if i start going down the wrong path um so if you're not going to be growing vegetables what do you do with it if you're making it is that well, the question okay. so so the idea of composting then is the property owner or 
wherever it is that you're living, whether you're a tenant or the property owner or whatever, if you choose to compost, you have to do it in your own yard. Oh, so, not necessarily. Okay. So there, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Yes, you can do that. And you can also do it just to build soil, not to grow food. Um, there's also Transition Troy every Saturday has a, um, a booth that collects compost, compostable foods or food scrap um, at the, a table at a booth at the farmer's market. So that's another option. Um, we are hoping to do a larger scale compost pilot that will be a, a collection program. And we would partner with a small local hauler. And for the time being, while we don't have our own in-city compost program, um, we would work with a nearby municipality that does. So there are three different models. Um, and also the Troy Farmers Market folks, the Transition Troy works with local farms. So whether it's um, your property, a local farm, the farmer's market or neighboring municipality, it's not gonna leave the capital region. It's not some large regional facility. It would be a small municipal compost or a local farm composter. So does a person, if they take it down to the Troy Farmer's Market, do they, you know, during the week collect their food scraps and anything that would go into a compost pile, so to speak, they collect it, put it in a plastic bag and take it down to the Farmer's Market and give it to, transis to the table transition Troy? Or are there other um, containers that these that the scraps and and compostable materials go into for delivery to someone? Well, so if you, um, if you go onto the same website where the electronic registration is, mm -hmm. there's also a link there to go onto the, the composter and rain barrel site. And so you can order, they have countertop compost buckets. Okay. You can also use a five gallon pail if you don't want to invest in that and keep it you know, in your garage or, outside your back door, as long as it's got a lid that affixes really well, um, you shouldn't have problems with that. Okay. 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 And okay. I, I'm happy to answer additional questions. So, you know, my email, you're more than welcome to email me at any time. Yep. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Don Coleman, I've unmuted you. Don, I think Dawn. you still need to unmute yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't have another question. Maybe I didn't lower my hand. Okay. Uh, maybe I didn't take it down for you. I'm sorry. Cindy Ryan, you are able to speak now. Okay. One more question. Um, I know I saw the electronic email from the mayor, or I think it was from the mayor um, originally, but can you refresh me like where that is again, like where I can find it? Is it on the website, on the Troy? Yes, web? so if if you, actually, if you just Google uh, Troy Electronics Recycling Event 2021, if you find it, great. If not, email me and I'll send you the link. Okay, and the question, uh, when is it? Can you tell me a date? May 8th, be May 8th. Um, from nine to one and we'll send confirmation times to everybody a week before the event. Okay, and is there also a uh, listing of what can be recycled or yeah, what we can bring, what is considered electronic? If it has a plug, you if can it has bring a plug. it. Okay, that's cool. Uh, no joke. They're, they're really pretty fantastic about it. They have licensing to be able to, to safely dispose of um, humidifiers and air conditioners, refrigerators. So not okay. everybody is licensed for that, but we're working with a vendor that is so that we can make sure they're handled properly. And this is taking place at the Alamo again? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Okay, no hands currently raised. I'm sure people want to talk. Raise your hand. Okay, Pamela Benchen. Not sure how you pronounce your last name, but go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, it's Ben Teen. And ben Teen, uh, I'm gathering that there's some confusion about what can be composted. Maybe it would be helpful to do a quick rundown of the items that are 
um, pick, accepted at the farmer's market currently and uh, that people would want to put into their own home compost? Um, so for the items that are collected at the farmer's market, they tend to take all food scraps, um, but I would also recommend if you have questions about specific materials that they take, again, that's an email to me because I'll put you in touch with Justin DuPont who tends to- Oh no, to I don't have any questions. I've got my own compost bin. I just oh, put oh, vegetable oh. matter in it. Yes, I was and, just gonna say for uh, home I, composting, that's what I would recommend is that it's non-dairy, non-meat for home composting, commercial composting, because the temperature gets higher. Um, can compost dairy and meat, but I don't know what um, the current protocol is that Justin is following on that. So I would be happy to pursue that question for you. Yeah, again, I've got my own compost bin. I don't put any uh, animal products in it. Um, I donate my yard waste to um, people that have bigger compost piles than I can manage in my little yard. But um, it's, it's confusing for people who haven't thought about doing it before. Agreed. I, th I appreciate that you brought that up. And that's certainly something that um, it, it's not my area of complete expertise. And so I'm happy to refer questions that I don't have the answers to, to Justin um, and to Christian Grigoraskos, who's an arborist in the city that is also very involved in Transition Troy. Yep, they're good folks. Yes. Thank you. Okay, waiting for somebody else to raise their hand. Oh, it's 6.59, it's close to seven o'clock. Do you wanna wrap it up, Renee? Absolutely. If there aren't any other questions, we'll sign off now. Oh, oh there goes Steven. Steven. Just raised Steven. Her hand. Let's give it another shot, Steven. Can you, can you hear us? We cannot hear you yet. Yeah, the icon is showing you're unmuted, but yeah. still can't hear you. Oh, that stinks. I wish I could help you, Stephen. So Stephen, I will re-request if you want to give me a call at the office or if you want to send me an email, happy to work with you to answer whatever questions you have. Um, meanwhile, if there aren't any other questions, we will end tonight's Zoom. I welcome you to call anytime you wish and uh, send emails as well. Additionally, we have four other meetings that will be coming up on the next four Mondays. Um, three of them will be daytime meetings and one more will be an evening meeting. That way we're trying to accommodate as many people's schedules as possible. Steven, one last shot. Okay. Well, yeah. with no further ado, we will sign off for the evening. And I thank you all for coming to the meeting. And thank you to Rob as well. Okay. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye.